Hello everyone, my name is Deltlead, and for the next few videos, I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about Vizzy in Simple Rockets 2. Vizzy is the in-game programming language that you can use to set up automated instructions, command responses, and even fully automate your missions. It's an incredibly powerful tool if you know how to use it, and one of the biggest reasons Simple Rockets 2 sets itself apart from the competition. Now, I'm going to assume for these videos that you are completely new not only to Vizzy, but programming in general. And if you do have some programming experience, you should still watch these videos. Going back over the basics can help reinforce your knowledge or maybe even reveal things that you never thought of before. So let's get into it. To create a Vizzy program, you can either select your command pod or chip and hit the edit program in the properties tab. Or you can go to the menu and click edit program there. Both options will take you to the Vizzy workspace. This is where we will build our programs for our rockets. Vizzy is a visual programming language, so instead of typing out lines of code and having to worry about syntax errors and making sure you didn't forget your semicolon, you simply drag and drop blocks of commands or program logic into your workspace and connect them together to do different things. In this video, I'm going to break down the different types of blocks you can use to build your programs. If you click on the tabs to the left side of your screen, you'll see the first type of block available to you are what are called program flow blocks. These blocks can be used to dictate when and how different sections of commands happen. The wait blocks will wait until the given parameter is satisfied. For instance, wait x seconds will pause the program for a given amount of time in seconds before continuing, while the wait until blank block will wait until whatever you put into the blank command input is true. For instance, you could say, wait until the altitude of your rocket is greater than 20,000 meters, at which point the program would enable that block and continue to read past it onto the other command blocks. Now these blue blocks in the section are what are called loops, and we'll dive deeper into how these work and what to do with these in a future video as it's a little bit more complicated and there's a lot you can do with them. And lastly we have display and log. These commands will actually allow you to output text either to the game screen directly for the player to see, or the log block can be used to display text in the log channel which can be found in your command pod. These are very useful for giving player information about what's happening in the program or for you to debug your program and make sure it's working properly. The next type of blocks we have available to us are called operators. Operators can be thought of as math or logic blocks, but they also include commands for joining two strings of characters together and a bunch of other somewhat random things that are very useful for code later on. There are a lot of different commands, but the two groups that I want to focus on right now are the math operators and comparison operators. Math operators are pretty self-explanatory. Add two values, subtract two values, multiply, divide, raise to a power, etc. The comparison operators are also pretty self-explanatory. They're all things you should have seen before in school. Greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, or equal to. But how these work are very important. These blocks can be used to create a Boolean value, which is a true or false value, based on two parameters. In the example I used earlier with the wait until blank block, you would use one of these to get it to trigger. These blocks can take two numerical inputs and output whether or not the statement itself is true. In this case, if the altitude was actually less than 20,000 meters, then it would output false. But if the altitude was greater than 20,000 meters, it would output true. The ability to get true-false outputs with these blocks is foundational to building automated rockets. The next section of command blocks we have are called craft instructions, and these are very, very important when you're looking at building more complicated programs that interact more with your crafts and automate them. What these commands do is pretty self-explanatory just from their names alone, but you can use these blocks to tell your craft to do anything, like control its pitch, its heading, to target another craft or a node, to activate a stage, or to control its activation groups and control inputs directly. Pretty much everything that you could do as a player to your craft can be done with these craft instructions. Next we have craft information. These blocks contain data about your craft's status, its mass, its velocity, its altitude, what its engine's doing, whether it's on the ground or not, the air density around it, how much gravity it's dealing with. Literally any piece of information you want to know about your craft can be found here, and this is very important when you're trying to write code that makes decisions based on what your craft is doing and where it is. So these are very, very important blocks that you should have a very firm understanding on before you try making an automated rocket. Now let's take a look at the events section. Events are things that happen that trigger sections of code to start running. And we've already seen the first event, on start, which will run the code sequentially whenever the game is first loaded and the craft is enabled. 
every busy program needs an on start event to work. Other particularly useful blocks are the broadcast and receive blocks. These can be used to start another string of code running in parallel with your first string of code. And the broadcast to craft block can be used to communicate to other command ships with Visi, like a dock ship on a station. Now, running parallel code is a little bit more advanced, so we'll cover that later. But a thing to note is that these event blocks don't have an input all the time, the yellow ones specifically. They are always the first block to happen. And the last section we'll cover in this video is variables. Now, variables are placeholder values that you can create to store things like a user input or outputs from a function or just to slim down large, clunky pieces of math. You can name variables, whatever you like, and use these blocks to set their value or change their value by a given amount. The set variable to user input block actually displays a prompt on the screen that asks the player to type in a value, and it can be very handy for a number of things. The remaining tabs here, lists, custom expressions, and custom instructions we'll get into in a later video as they're not as commonly used except for in more advanced programs. Now that we've been familiarized with all the different types of blocks in Visi, let's talk a little bit about how to put them together in the workspace. Now as I showed before, by simply clicking and dragging on a block, I can add it to the workspace. When I move a block close to others that are already in the workspace, a blue arrow will appear and show me where that block will be connected when I release it. Visi runs its programs from a top to bottom order, so blocks that are on top will happen before the ones on the bottom. Any of the blocks that have rounded corners are not commands that can be run, but actually values that you can put into other blocks. And any block with these slanted corners are true-false logic blocks that can be put into program flow blocks. Let's say that I wanted to build a program that will throttle up my engines and launch my rocket, then pitch my rocket over 60 degrees when I hit a certain altitude, let's say 10,000 meters. So I'll take a look at my on start block, and I need to put in a couple of craft instructions to get this to work. I will need a craft instruction that sets my throttle to 1, 1 being the maximum value for your throttle, or 100%, and then I will need to use the activate stage block to actually ignite my engines. Then I'm going to use a wait until uh, event occurs block and put in a comparator operator here that we talked about before, greater than or equal to. Next I'm going to add a craft information block into this greater than or equal to statement, my altitude ASL. This will give me the altitude of my craft above sea level in meters. And then in the second block I'll type in the number 10,000. Now this wait until expression will activate and allow the program to continue reading after my altitude is greater than 10,000 meters. Now I'm going to go back to the craft instructions blocks and grab a set pitch to and place that under my wait until expression and then I will set the value to set my pitch to to be 60 degrees. Now, reading the code from top to bottom, my throttle be set to 1, my engines will activate, and then it will wait until I'm at 10,000 meters before setting my pitch to 60 degrees. Let's try it out. A few more things that you should definitely know as you're getting used to Visi is that you can hover your mouse or your finger if you're using mobile over the blocks in the menu and a tooltip will appear giving you a short description of what that block does. This is a very handy way to refresh your memory or learn different functions for blocks that you're not familiar with. Also by clicking on the blocks that have drop down lists in the craft instructions you can see all the different types of values that these blocks will output. Whenever you see a blue 1, 2, 3 that means the output of that block is going to be a number. The yellow T slash F is a true false output. The green upper and lowercase a means it's a non-number string of text like a word or a letter. And the orange arrow means that it's a vector, which is a three dimensional value with a direction and magnitude. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but we'll get into those later. Now, these tutorials wouldn't be very helpful without some practice to back it up. So I'm gonna assign you some homework to reinforce what we just talked about. Here's the assignment. In the description below, I have a link to a pretty basic rocket that you saw earlier in this video. 
I want you to build a program for this rocket that will get it into orbit only using the wait until X block and the craft instructions set throttle and set pitch. You should be able to get just about anything into orbit using just these three blocks and you'll have to be a little clever in how you apply them so I want you to think about what you want the rocket to do and what you would do if you were flying the rocket manually then create that in the program. Good luck and I will see you in the next video.